Today, hooking up is part of our culture, and unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. However, I know a lot of you are stuck in your heads wondering where this is going after hooking up with him. In the beginning, he was all about you. In the beginning, he was initiating. He was saying all these things, and then it flips like a switch. You're wondering, what the hell? What happened? Well, thankfully, that's why I'm making this video. I want to dive deep, not only into what category a guy puts you in after hooking up, but why he does it and how to be seen as girlfriend material. Now, I have to start this off with a disclaimer. This video, just by nature, the vibe is pick me vibes, right? Uh, no one should be watching videos. How do I make a guy think of me as girlfriend material after this? All right, right. I, I, I don't, I don't want you to be a pick me girl, but I do think the video is important to understand male psychology and uh, dating dynamics. So I had to make the video. With that being said, though, let's jump right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the concept that sex or a lack of does not equate to a relationship or again the lack of one like not being in one that is not what dictates a man's decision on being in a relationship with you or not i'd argue a guy already knows what he wants to do with you a guy already knows what category he's putting you in and this is what we call the wider lens Essentially, this means the person that has the information that the other does not have about the frame, about the perspective, right, ha usually has an advantage. So let me give you a couple examples of this. One being the title of this video is, you, he is at an advantage if he knows he's not going to give you a relationship. Now you might think, man, he's been opening up, he's treating me different than other girls, we've been consistent, things have been going well. You know, you're very hopeful of it. But at the end of the day, he knows he's not going to give you a relationship. Uh, he has the, the, the wider lens. He, he knows the overall outcome of it, especially if you're looking for a relationship. He's the dictator of it. Um, on the other end, let's say you and I are going on a date. And I'm like, man, she's really eating everything that I'm dropping here. She, she's filling me. She, she's flirting back. She's giving me all the signs. I'm definitely getting it in tonight, right? That's what I think. And I think I'm doing it correctly because in terms of the frame, like the dates that we're, that we're, that we're having, I'm like, yeah, everything's going well. I feel like I have the power. I'm the fucking top dog. But you know in the back of your head, nah, that's just not me. I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping with that guy. Nice try. You know, you're just kind of along for the ride. Um, so you know, you have the wider lens. You know, I, uh, I'm not. You're, you're not going to sleep with me. Of course, there has to be a counter to this. This is why I tell women you must be courted. You have to play very cautionary. It doesn't really matter if you sleep with the guy date one or date ten. It really doesn't matter if if you're talking to a guy who is emotionally available wants the same thing as you, wants you to be his girlfriend, and you guys are happy, healthy, loving people, and you move and progress towards a relationship. It doesn't matter if it's date one or date 10. However, you, don't, you do not know if it is that guy. You don't know what guy I am. You don't know if I'm the guy who's gonna hit and quit it. You don't know if I'm the guy who wants the relationship. So you have to slow it down as the woman. You have to be more cautionary. In evolutionary psychology, there's a thing called the parental investment theory. And it basically states that the woman, or the woman, yeah, in a lot of senses, the more invested sex into the offspring usually has to be the choosier one. And because you're the one literally bearing the child, right, you have to be a choosier uh, sex. You can't just let guys come and go. Guys have to court you. Why? To prevent what I'm saying. You don't want a guy to come and go. He has to prove himself. He has to court you, meaning he has to consistently invest his resources over time time, energy, effort, money, oh, right? He has to do that. He has to say, I want a relationship and you have to filter him. You, if you think, if he hasn't had a relationship in the last 10 years and you think you're the one who's going to come around and change that, no. If he's been single for three months and you think you're going to come in and get a relationship out of him, no, right? So it's important to hold out and wait to see if this guy is actually boyfriend material and wanting the same thing as you. That's how you counter the wider lens. But the reason I'm saying all this is 
Again, I don't want you thinking sex is the ultimate indicator on if a guy is going to sleep with you or not. The only reason us dating coaches tell you to hold off is value, self-respect, having him not take you for granted, and overall um, making the right decision on if this guy uh, even deserves it by, again, courting you. He has to court you. So to make this extremely easy, there's only three outcomes that can happen after, after sex. He wants more of you, he wants the same, or he wants less. And we're gonna go over each of those to make this very, very, very straightforward. So you leave understanding where in the hell you stand and what you need to do. So let's start off with the worst one. He's cutting you off, hitting quits. Now what determines that? Well, there's several things. The first one is, are you talking to a guy who is emotionally available, right? Is the context freaking this guy out. If you're talking to a guy where the context is freaking him out and he flips like flips like a switch, okay, over sex, he's emotionally available or unavailable. There's nothing you can do about that. I tell my clients all the time, you could be the perfect effing woman. If you're talking to a dude who is emotionally unavailable, right, he's going to find a reason. It's just a matter of time. He's going to find a reason. The second variable is he didn't want a relationship in the first place. You guys didn't have that talk. You didn't have a talk on what you're looking for. Or, or if you did and he said, I'm looking for a relationship, he was lying. Again, it's easier to say all that stuff in the beginning when the context isn't built up. It's just like, hey, yeah, see where it goes. Or I know if I tell her the wrong thing, she's going to pull away. So a guy may actually feel I want a relationship, but deep down, he can't give you one. There's a difference between liking you and wanting a relationship. There's also a difference between wanting a relationship and being able to maintain and give a woman one. If a guy cannot do that, he only has two options. He can convince you, like negotiate, that hey, friends with benefits, it's not that bad of an idea. Let's just go with the flow and see what happens. That bullshit. Or, of course, go along with it until he feels the pressure, the context builds up, and he feels obligated to give you something, or he's leading you on, which in overall, will he, he'll pull away. He'll be done. Another variable is it moved very fast, and he's freaking out. The context, right? And context can be many things. How much you hang out, what you guys say, hooking up, meeting friends and family, future talking, the pace. It can be a thousand things. Okay, it's it, the fact is it layers up. He freaks out, realizes I can't give you a relationship and then pulls away. Just like I previously said, ladies, there's nothing you can do about this. Context is not a bad thing. Let me just put that out there. Context is not a bad thing. You're not trying to prevent context. You naturally create it by progressing, by moving forward. So think of it like this. There has to be a cost, okay, to getting desires. A, a guy has to build context to get them. A guy has to, if you guys are hanging out, having fun, hooking up and talking, like you're just not gonna let him do those things. There has to be some type of reciprocity. We have to go on dates. We have to have conversations. We have to get to know each other. We have to open up, be vulnerable, meet each other's friends, stay over, leave things over, like whatever it is, okay? Consistency, texting, calling on the phone, how long you're talking, like that stuff has to happen. It has to, okay? But when a guy, again, this is why I say context is neutral. When a guy doesn't want a relationship, he looks at that thing as bad. But if a guy does want a relationship, obviously he's going to progress with that. That's good news. The fact, if I really like you and I want a relationship with you, and it's progressing forward with all those things, good, I'm doing my job. But as a guy who is getting the benefits right from you because you're not necessarily dating, but I'm sure you guys are hanging out, having fun, hooking up, even if you're not hooking up, benefits are more than just hooking up. If you guys are hanging out and having a good time, um, you know, again, it, 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 it has to build. And that's where a guy starts to get in his head. So don't try to avoid contact. It's not a bad thing. If anything, it filters men. If anything, it gives you more intel on where this guy stands. Because whether you build it or not, that's not the indicator on if a guy will commit. It does save a woman a lot of time, though, because if you're trying to dodge it and walk on eggshells, well, he's just going to take advantage of you. Which goes on to the next variable. 
You're talking to a guy who is taking you for granted. If you're just giving, 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 giving to him, and he's getting all these benefits without having to pay any cost for it, and then you finally show him the bill, basically. You're like, hey, relationship, let's have a talk about it. And, and he was getting all the benefits before that. It's, that's going to be a smack in the face. You'd be like, oh, shit. Uh, well, um, yeah, I can't, I can't really do that, but it, it was fun. Bye. Like, that's what's going to happen. The, the analogy I always use with this is um, going to a Ferrari dealership. It might, it might be your dream car, which I don't know why. It's not mine. Fer, Ferraris are not pretty cars, in my opinion. Don't, don't at me. Uh, but if a guy, if someone tells, if the dealership says, yeah, I think we can get this guy to buy if he drives around for a month, and then we show him the price tag. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm driving around for a month loving it. And then someone knocks on my door a month later and says, hey, it's $5,000 a month. I'm like, eh, I'm good. I know what it's like driving a Ferrari. Same thing happens with women. If you're just going to give him all the benefits in the beginning and then one day show up at his door and says, hey, well, what are we do fucking doing here? Um, he's going to freak out and pull away, especially if he's an emotionally unavailable man who is not looking for a relationship. And lastly, the assets are not worth the liabilities. Ladies, at the end of the day, if he's getting all these assets, okay, and he sees a relationship as a liability, someone has to pay the cost. He's either going to pay the cost, which doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing, by getting into the relationship, but it is a bad thing because he doesn't want that, or you're going to have to pay the cost and go along with this and be a good little girl and deal with it. Obviously, that's not fair to you, so you're going to have to say something. He knows this. So he's going to get the assets in the meantime, and then when you guys have the talk, you're probably going to go your separate ways if a guy's not looking for a relationship. But at the end of the day, um, if a relationship is too much of a liability, and I hate saying it like that, but in his eyes, a relationship's not a liability, but in his eyes they are. It um, doesn't matter how good the assets are, if he just cannot give you a relationship, there's nothing you can do, no matter how great you are. Oh, like, I, like I said earlier, a guy is going, if he's emotionally unavailable, he's going to find a reason. Uh, he's just not going to give you a relationship, and he's going to pull back. It's, the liabilities just aren't, aren't worth it to him. He's going to go back out on the market and look for another woman and rinse and repeat. So the second option on what he could do with this is keeping it where it is. Now, what makes a man do this? It's when a man likes you, but he's unsure about you, or he's unsure about a relationship. Ladies, at the end of the day, it's all about risk avoidance. At the end of the day, it's all about risk avoidance. I don't want to cut you off because I really like you and I won't get those benefits. And, I, and if I change my mind and regret it, well, now I lost you. Okay, So he doesn't want to cut you off, but he doesn't want to jump into a relationship either because he doesn't either want one or he's unsure you're that girl. So what's the best thing to do is to keep you right here in the middle. And that's what a lot of guys do because they can just reap the benefits without paying the cost of a relationship. Another variable is he's in a really good position right now. He's in a really good position on what he has and doesn't want to lose you. So he's going to cr try to stay right here and reap these benefits of having his cake and eating it too, of talking to you while, I guess, think of it as an insurance policy. I hate to say it like that, ladies, but if a guy's unsure about you, he's not going to double down. He's not going to convince himself of a relationship, especially if you're not putting the pressure on him yet. He's going to maintain what this is, have fun in the meantime, okay, and until he's either convinced or, well, conv I guess convinced either way, convinced that you're not that girl or convinced that you are, but it is not your job to convince him. That's the problem. A lot of women do all these things to try to convince the guy. I'm telling you, I, there's so many times I'll have clients on the phone and they'll say, what can I do to convince him? What can I do to get him to see? No, 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 no. It's not your job. Like, no wonder you're in the position you're in. I always say, it's, like, I always say this phrase. It's like a three or four part process or phrase that I put into a paragraph. But this always happens, like the summary of, of every woman who comes to me. You desire a man so much that you fear losing him to the point where you lower your standards to keep him around and then he takes advantage of it and then you wonder why you're in the situation you're in. 
It is not your job to change his mind. It's your job to put your best self forward, to do your part, no more. And if he's not on the same page as you, call that shit out, like I say, at six to eight weeks. And, uh, and the whole time you should be talking to other dudes. That's what should be happening here. It's not rocket science. And of course, the last variable, this is a really important one, ladies. This is just human nature. He's going to be looking to see if you are one of the best options he has. A man will not. It just doesn't make sense. You don't even get mad at him about this. Like, I, I hate when women get mad about men on this. Attraction is not a choice. He cannot help that he does not think you are the best option. If he doesn't see you as the best option, mother, why would Mother Nature say, yeah, you better commit to this girl? Instead, don't you think he'll follow the the, the, what they call the sexual strategy for men, like mother nature, evolutionary psychology saying this, this isn't like men just being fuck boys or, and, and players and shit like that. But if a man can get you, but he doesn't want to commit to you, well, it's, it's best for that man to spread his seed. Again, mother nature doesn't give a shit about all these emotions. Mother nature doesn't give a shit about the, the mixed signals and confusing dynamics. At the end of the day, can you survive long enough to reproduce? Can you survive long enough to spread your seed? Because as soon as you die, your generation or your offspring or whatever species, it continues. You did your job. You know, so if a guy likes you, but you're not the best option, like I said earlier, he's not going to cut you off, but he's not going to commit. Um, that's why I tell a woman, your value is so important. It's so ingrained into time. Who you spend your time on and who you're intimate with is the most important thing a woman can offer a man. Do not give a man your time or intimacy if he is unsure, or if you can tell he's unsure or emotionally unavailable or giving you bullshit, mixed signals or this or that or whatever. A guy has to consistently invest his resources into you to make sure or to convince you, okay, this guy's this guy's a good catch, right? And vice versa, he has to feel, okay, this is a badass woman that I want to invest in, aka one of the best options, um, that I want to invest in. That's kind of how you, that's, it's kind of a feedback uh, loop, ladies. Do you see how it works here? It's kind of a feedback loop. If you do the right thing and you come off the right way, he's going to invest heavily. But again, he has to do it consistently. Not just before sex, but after sex. And as soon as he starts pulling that bullshit, you got to call it out. And the last outcome, obviously, is being girlfriend material. Now, what makes a guy think this girl is girlfriend material? Now, I'm going to kind of get redundant here, but I do want to go back to the best option thing. Here's the beautiful thing about being the best option. You don't actually have to be the best option. You don't actually have to statistically be the perfect woman in every situation and have him think, yeah, it's that girl. You have to make him believe it. How do I know this? Because a lot of you are talking, when you come to me on the phone, you are, a lot of you are selling yourself short. A lot of you are talking to a bunch of effing idiots but for some reason, you think this guy's God's gift to earth. And I'm not even saying that as if like, in terms of jealousy or maybe like you, like, you know, women will say this about a guy. Oh, he's good looking, but he's not that great of a guy. And it's like, nah, you know, he's a fucking stud. I'm not even saying it. Like the guys you all show me, these guys are fucking duds. Like, are you serious? This motherfucker, you're stressing over this motherfucker who can't even, he looks down, he can't even see his own fucking wiener because his gut's covering it. Like this dude right here, like get the, get that shit out of here, man. Or this guy who's a narcissist or a play, or like there's so many things. Like women will come to me with these guys, but because they're so emotionally detached or attached, right? And by the way, what I'm trying to get at is we as humans are emotionally based creatures. We make decisions based on emotions, which kind of goes or contradicts the thing I say about mother nature, not giving a shit about emotion. But I, what I mean by that is like, you're in your head, you're freaking out, you're, you're this, you're that, you know, mother nature just wants the results. She just wants to get it fucking done. Okay. But a lot of women, you all wrap yourself up in all this. And for a guy who I don't even think is worth it, but you think he's one of the best options. So either you have a lack of options or a lack of self-respect, because I don't know why you're dealing with it. That's the funny thing about men. Men don't deal with it. Men don't deal with it. If you're not one of the best options, okay, well then you're going to be a hookup. You're not going to be girlfriend material. But like I said, the beautiful thing about all this is you don't actually have to be the best option. You can 
make him believe it by having this connection with him, by having rapport, depth, chemistry, the same values, being part of the same tribe. And again, if you want all of this, I talk about all this in my guides, ladies. It's crazy women don't just invest this little bit amount of money and, and get those guides, which the links are down below. It will tell you every single thing I'm talking about with tribes, framing, context, building rapport, sticking out from your competition. The, the link is down below. It's literally six guides that are going to help you in this, right? But again, the beautiful thing about it is it's emotionally based. You you, you could trigger these responses in a guy if you know how to do it correctly. You don't just have to be the best option. You have to make him believe you are. I know I said that 10 times already, so I'm beating a dead horse. We'll move on to the next one. The next thing is standards and structure. You know, I, I, I keep on talking about Mother Nature a lot, but there is a way this is supposed to unfold. A guy has no reason to commit to you Okay, unless he just really likes you and wants a relationship. He has no reason to commit to you if you just flop over and let him walk all over you. It's like, well, I know she isn't going anywhere, so I'll just have fun with this, talk to other women until she actually puts some pressure on me, and then I may commit. No, you do not benefit from that, women. You Trust me. A man has to court you. The fact that a woman doesn't follow these guidelines is fucking crazy. And you all think you do follow them until you're about a month or two in and then he starts pulling this bullshit and you're like, what's going on? And I'm not saying a guy has to bend over backwards for you. I had a client the other uh, yesterday, and I know she's watching this, so I'm not, I'm not dogging on her, love her dearly. Um, and I hope the best for her. But she was telling me, I want him to treat me like a princess and to, and to buy me flowers all the time and this and that. And I'm like, girl, that's not going to happen. Like, that's just, no. That's, that's, in her situation, that's definitely not going to happen. A guy's not going to make that leap from what's going on in her situation to, to, no. That's unrealistic. But you do need to have a guy spend his resources on you. Time, energy, effort, money. You know, not, not some crazy extravagant thing. You need to have a guy communicate consistent, right? You need to have a guy, um, com well, I would say communicate, be consistent, give you clarity, no bullshit, okay? If you do those things, you can reward a man. But like I said, there's a feedback loop. There's a system involved. A lot of women lower their value for whatever reason and then wonder why they're in the situation they're in. It's crazy to me. There has to be standards and structure. A man will not commit to a girlfriend, to a woman, who he does not respect. Absolutely fucking not. Absolutely not. Another variable, and this is a very common one, a very logical one. I, we've, I've been talking about this whole time. The guy actually has to be emotionally available. Here's the thing, ladies. Here's the crazy thing. I'll, people come to me all the time and I'll tell them, I'm like, 60, maybe 70% of the game is finding the right guy. The other 30% is the stuff that you think it is. The other 30% are the videos that you watch and read about on, or I guess the videos you watch from dating coaches and the articles and books you read from other people and authors, like, no, 30% of it is that. 70% is actually finding a guy who wants the same thing as you, who is emotionally available and is a decent guy. Once you do that, it's so easy. It's just yours not to F up. That's all it is. But it, when you're getting mixed signals, when you're getting bullshit, when you're getting guys who are hot and cold, what that basically means is I want you when I want you and I don't when I don't. When I want the assets, it's all based on me. When I want the assets, I'll blow your shit up. But once I start feeling I'm satisfied or I'm starting to feel you're coming on too strong or you're wanting too much and I don't want to fucking do the work, then okay, I want my space. Mixed signals, ladies, mixed signals are not a thing. Mixed signals means I like you when I like you and I don't when I don't. Mixed signals means I want, I'm not going to say like you. I'm going to say when I want the assets, I'll put in the effort. When I don't, I don't. Leave me alone. That's what it is. So if you're talking to an emotionally available man, you're not going to get that. You're going to get consistency. You're going to get clarity. You're going to get, you're going to have a guy communicate and helps you understand what he's thinking, what's going on and, and make sure it's a win-win. Everyone's happy. Emotionally unavailable man, that does not happen.
That does not happen. And the last variable, of course, is you're doing it in the right sequence. If you want a guy to be your boyfriend, if you want a guy to see you as girlfriend material after hooking up, you have to have it in the right sequence. So I usually say there's four things you have to do. The first thing is get a date, which if you're hooking up, you should probably be doing that. Get a date. Then you have to get consistent dates. Then consistent after consistency, you have to make it feel like a relationship. That's where the sex comes in, okay? It has to, uh, having sex with somebody is part of a relationship. It has to feel like that. If I'm consistently having dates with you and it feels like a relationship and we're hooking up, it's much more likely to transition to the fourth stage, which is a relationship. If you start doing it early on before you get consistent dates, right? Uh, I guess the, the second step, before you started getting consistent dates or even in the beginning, you just start from hooking up. Like, there's no reason for him to transition to the other ones because he's going to take you for granted. So again, there's a four step process, dates, consistent dates, making it feel like a relationship and then it turns into a relationship. You should be having sex when it starts to, when you're getting consistency and it starts to feel like a relationship. Sex is part of that. If you do it any earlier, okay, you're, you're cutting yourself short. You're putting, you're, you're taking on the risk on whatever the hell this is, blowing up in your face and going against you. So lastly, how do we increase our chances of a man committing? This is the pick me stuff. I, I, I'm kind of like uh, feeling kind of wheezy about talking or talking about, but how do we get a man to see you as girlfriend material after? So the first, the first two things, these are the most obvious ones. Filter the guy out. Like I said, 70% of the battle is finding a decent guy, which kind of leads to the second thing. Is he emotionally available? It doesn't matter how good you play the game. If you're talking to an emotionally unavailable guy, okay, who you missed by, or, or you missed that part of him by not filtering him out, you can play the perfect game. You are not going to get a relationship, ladies. You're just not. It's not going to happen. It's not in the cards for you. Another thing is, I, I, I kind of already hinted at it, don't put out early. When's the right time? When you're ready. But if you actually want a number, I say the fifth date. Don't put out before the fifth date. If you can consistently get dates up to that point and up to that, it's not about getting to the fifth date part, just so women understand. It's not about getting to the fifth date. It's about having enough time to see if he's a decent guy, if you actually want to sleep with him, if he's consistent, if he's investing in you, if he wants the same thing, having time to filter him and do your background check, whatever it is, okay? And then if he's been a decent guy and he has earned it, and again, that's based on if you want to or not, and if he has earned it by the fifth date, suck him off and have a good time. But before that, do not do not do it. If you want a guy to respect you, do not sleep with him before the fifth date, ladies. Trust me, you will not, if you sleep with him on the first date, he is not going to transition over into a relationship. Now, that contradicts a little bit what I said earlier. Well, if a guy truly likes you, it doesn't matter. Yes, but you don't know that. You're taking on the risk, right, by playing so carelessly and not knowing who this guy is you're actually talking to. And how does that unfold? Well, you become needy, clingy, desperate. You're in your head. You're freaking out. You're wanting answers. And then it freaks him out. He gets in his head and you pull away. Don't set yourself up for failure failure by hooking up early. The next thing is showing premise over intent. Again, I talk about this into a lot more detail in my uh, guides down below. Make sure to check them out. But in a nutshell, intent is making it very obvious you're interested in him and you want him to fill the role of a relationship. And premise means you're looking for a relationship, but not necessarily with him. You have to change your mindset and you have to change your actions on, on how that looks. So example would be um, premise is, um, you know, you're okay to disagree. You're not blowing up his shit right away. You're showing reciprocity, um, after, re, 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 I guess, um, reactionary reciprocity is what I call it. He does the shit first and then you do it. But when you're showing intent, that that's a whole different ball game. You're, you're, you're making it very obvious you want him. You do this by agreeing to only be exclusive with him, 
being there at his beck and call, saying you want a relationship with him, you really like him, I really miss you, I'm not talking to anybody else. Like, you know, very personal, over, over the fucking top compliments. Um, you know, all, all, all that. As soon as you start doing that, a guy knows he has you. There's nothing wrong with flirting. There's nothing wrong with sexual banter. There's nothing wrong with back and forth. But you have, you have to balance it with quick wit, with disagreements, with not texting right away. It's all the flow, an ebb and flow. It, if, if you're, if a lot of women, when they start really liking a guy, they show a lot of intent, and then they wonder why a guy doesn't you know, invest. He doesn't need to. He's going to start taking you for granted. And of course, I'm going to kind of sum this up because I could go forever on this, but I call it like the the five star, uh, I don't know, five something. But there's five things a guy needs in order to commit to a woman. And we talked about a lot of them here, but I do want to sum these five things up. You have to be the best option, or he believes you're the best option. He has to, be, he has to think you're physically attractive. I, I, like beautiful, not just like sexy on hit it. Any f- girl walking with a pair of tits, a guy thinks that. You know, he has to be like, wow, she's effing beautiful. Um, you have to make him be, make him want to be a better person. Okay, if I have a woman in my life who's a cheerleader, she's in my corner, she's very supportive. Hell yeah, I, I want to be better for her and me, for our family. Great feeling. You have to. Uh, he has to believe his life is better with you in it than without. That's a good feeling. You don't want a guy thinking, man, my life fucking, my life's kind of worse with her in it. Which for a lot of you guys, that's how he feels because it's just a bunch of fighting and shit. But if you're a fun, badass chick and he can give you a relationship and he feels my life is better with her in it, I, I don't want my life without her, that's a good thing. And of course, the last thing is you have to have a lot of assets and limited liabilities. Uh, men, listen, I always say it's like taking medicine or prescription medicine. If a guy is going to take this pill to to get rid of one symptom, but then other ones come, it's or other ones appear, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I just want the pill that that solves the problem. Okay, so you don't want he doesn't want to take on a lot of risk by going after these things. So if you're a high value woman who has a lot to offer, you're very attractive, you're fun, witty, you know all these things, and you're not high drama, you're not high stress, you're not high maintenance, you're not overly jealous, you guys aren't fighting all the time, whatever it is, then that's a very, very good sign. So I want to leave you with a little bit more. I want you, uh, I, I don't I don't want you falling into friends with benefits. I want you to guarantee the relationship. That's why I made this playlist right here that I'm, I'm going to put up that has a bunch of videos on how to prevent friends of benefits, how to get a guy to like you, how not to waste your time, how to get a guy to regret, all that type of stuff. So if you're interested in that, click that link right there, ladies. If you want my guides, links are down below along with coaching from yours truly. Ladies, I love you all. Take care and peace.